Are you the kind of person who enjoys softly running your hands over a tactile surface and feeling your fingertips tingle with the electric response beneath them? Or do you prefer the grasp of something hard and physical in your palm? Something you can actually manipulate with your hands to get the reaction you want. Relax, talk about knobs. No, buttons in cars and whether they're better than touchscreens, you weirdos. What I'm trying to get at is whether touchscreens are actually a good thing or actually a total menace that according to one study are more dangerous than driving whilst drunk or on drugs. That's a pretty alarming claim and I'll get back to it in a second, but doesn't it seem weird that there are rules that restrict us from using our smartphones while driving because screens are distracting and yet car manufacturers are going all out to put more and more controls on screens inside cars. What, just because they're attached to a dashboard that makes them less distracting? I don't get the logic. So why is it happening? And should members of my crew, Knob Gang, be worried? Cars and tech have a complicated relationship. 20 years ago, phones were big and screens were small and it was the same for cars. Look at the dashboard of a car from the early 2000s and you will be shocked at just how tiny the navigation screen is and how fiddly the buttons to operate it were. And these systems used to cost thousands of pounds as optional extras back in the day. If you're old enough to remember the pre-smartphone days and the finger dexterity that you needed to tap out a text message on tiny physical buttons, then you'll appreciate why early tech in this area wasn't really compatible with driving. But two things happened. Smartphones came along and car companies got clever about integrating tech into their cars. BMW was a leader here with its original iDrive system, which launched in the 2001 7 series. At the time, people hated it. The idea was that you had to control everything with a big turn and push controller. And that, to a lot of people, was crazy controversial. But the system's now been refined over the years and now the latest eighth generation iDrive system introduced on the BMW iX can be controlled by touch, speech, or gesture or if you prefer to keep it old school, there's still a physical turn and push controller, only now it's made of crystal for some reason. Other manufacturers were inspired by that idea. Mercedes now do a similar thing. Some worked well, others not so much. Lexus, I'm looking at you. I don't know what they were on when they made their tingly laptop touchpad thing. Who in their right minds thinks the best way to interface with a car is by using a mouse trackpad while driving? But as everyone is now getting used to touch screens on our phones and tablets, car makers have started to embrace that technology to the point where physical buttons are becoming extinct. Bye-bye switches, hello giant tablets complete with apps, icons, widgets, and configurable home screens, just like our phones. Great, cars and tech in perfect harmony. The future is here, woo except not everybody agrees. Experts at the Transport Research Laboratory, TRL, have been studying the way tech distracts drivers for years. Back in the day, they calculated that using a handheld phone slows your response time by as much as half a second, increasing your stopping distance at 70 miles an hour by 15 meters. That's the difference between having a crash and not having a crash. Even using a hands-free phone isn't that much better. That increases your stopping distance by over 12 meters. And these findings were instrumental in changing the laws around mobile phone use in the car. But since 2002, when this research was carried out, phones and in-car technology have changed beyond recognition. In 2015, there was a study that revealed that distraction varies according to what you're doing as much as the device that you're doing it with. So texting is obviously more dangerous than a phone call, but using your car's entertainment system is even more distracting even when compared with a hands-free call. With a hands-free call, you're having a conversation, but hopefully still looking at the road, hopefully. With some of these cars, I feel like they're forcing people to look away from the road just to do basic things. You wanna adjust the heating in some cars, you have gotta look away, press three, four, five buttons before you can set the temperature that you want. There is no button for heating in a lot of new cars. It's all inside the screen. More recently, TRL expressed concern that the situation might be worse than a lot of people realize. They've been using volunteer drivers in simulators to measure how distracting new technologies can be, and the results ain't good. 
The report by TRL for the road safety organization I Am Road Smart found that users of screen systems are taking their eyes off the road for as long as 16 seconds at a time. 16! It found that using touch controls resulted in reaction times worse than texting while driving. But what about Apple CarPlay and Android Auto? They make things safer, right? Not necessarily. The same research found that using these systems to do something as innocent as selecting what music to listen to results in worse driving than if you're impaired by alcohol or even cannabis. It's not all bad news though. The study also concedes that both Apple and Android systems have increased functionality while reducing workload on the driver compared with many of the systems that car makers build into their cars. It's also been shown that many drivers actually slow down and stick to their lane on the motorway when taking a call or interacting with the tech. Maybe they're subconsciously aware that their attention is wandering. But the conclusion still remains that using screen-based tech is at least as bad as handheld phone use. Handheld phone use that is now against the law. That's not stopping car makers. Pretty much everyone is going down the same route. They're stripping out physical buttons and switches because they want clean haptic surfaces. You get it in everything from the Porsche Taycan to the Nissan Aria. In the past, where you could adjust the volume or temperature in a car using muscle memory or just a quick glance, now you've got to figure out which bit of a flat surface you're supposed to wave your hand over. Other manufacturers are stripping out buttons entirely and putting everything into screen control. Tesla is probably the most extreme example, but VW and its related brands like Skoda, Audi, and Cupra are all following suit. VW have even started reducing the number of buttons for the windows in the car. In the ID3, you don't have rear window switches in the front. You've got to push a separate touchpad and use the same knobs that control the front windows for the back. Why? I'll tell you why. The designers love it because it declutters the interior and they think it looks really cool. It's also more cost effective because those knobs and switches are actually incredibly expensive to engineer and build, especially for premium models. Remember that crystal in the BMW where consumers expect them to feel as precise as a fancy Swiss watch. They might tell you that screens are a luxury feature, but at a component level, they're actually cheaper and mean much simpler wiring. They save money. With connected cars and over-the-air updates, it even means manufacturers can embed features in the car that you have to pay to unlock in the future or even add new kit that they can charge you for further down the line. In the future, people are gonna be charging you a subscription for things as basic as heated seating. It's already happening. Now, by now, you're probably saying, Rory, enough with the problems, give me solutions. Well, I guess there's voice activation. In that same study into CarPlay and Android Auto, the researchers discovered that interacting with apps through speech is much less distracting than doing it through touch. But not everybody's into it. And having to wake the system up with something cringy like hola hola, as you've got to do in the latest Cupras, is just a bit embarrassing. Imagine doing that with passengers. You'd feel weird, wouldn't you? So where does that leave us? Well, legislators are in a bit of a pickle because having ordered us to put our phones down, the alternative is possibly even worse. But the horse is already bolted. Touchscreens are here to stay and there's no way that they can now make them illegal. Unless, you know, they're gonna stop us adjusting the volume or force us to pull over just to turn your heated seats on. Not gonna happen. A bit of awareness probably does help though. And as drivers, we just have to think a little bit more carefully about how we use tech on the move more safely. People laugh at me when I talk about knob gang, but there's a reason for it. Knobs save lives, shut up. Right, okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay safe out there and don't forget to like and subscribe and do head on over to autotrader.co.uk if you need to buy or sell your car. There is no better way, trust me. Catch you on the next one.